Scary moment on a Delta flight where part of the outboard trailing edge flap separated from the aircraft. Thankfully, no one was injured. And in this video, we're gonna dive into the maintenance manuals and see what most likely caused this issue. And then we're gonna talk about how the pilots would handle a unique situation like this. I must say, it's finally nice to see an Airbus back in the news. Wait, what's that? This is a Boeing 737-800? You're kidding me. Unfortunately, this meme I made two years ago is aging like fine wine. Um, I'm super excited. It was really tough. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was definitely a different ball game, but I had a blast, so thank you. <laughs> I don't want to beat up on Boeing too much, though, especially because I don't want to be found dead under mysterious circumstances. I don't know, something like drowning in five feet of water, despite the fact that I'm 6'1 and a very strong swimmer. In all seriousness and fairness to Boeing, this could have been a maintenance issue by a mechanic or a faulty part by a manufacturer. That being said, let's not forget if this happened 20 years ago, no one would even have heard about this, you know, unless you happen to have one of those old school video cameras. So to answer the question, I get all the time. I don't think these events are getting more frequent. There's just a lot more cameras out there to film things. And with the low percentage of problems, considering the vast amount of flights that happen every day, this should help us keep things in perspective. All right, so let's go ahead and watch a little bit of the video. I'm going to react to it. And then we're going to talk about the maintenance side of what may have happened. And then we're going to show you how the pilots would handle this situation. Let's go. So yeah, this, don't get me wrong, this is not something you ever wanna see. This is a very one-off and something very rare. Uh, you know, normally you might get a flaps fail, you might get uh, a flaps asymmetry, but for something to completely detach like this is definitely like a, whoa, and that's again why it would make the news. But, you know, as I'm watching it, the plane seems under control, the people seem calm in the back, and uh, you know, if I was a pilot sitting on this flight and you turned to me and said, are we gonna be okay? Even right here, not knowing it, I would say, yeah, we're gonna be fine. Like the worst thing that this could happen was like that rip off and go back into the engine. But thankfully the engines on the 737 are in front of the wings. So I would say that that was a very uh, low risk of that hitting, you know, ripping off and hitting something. But that would be like the biggest risk you could have is if that acts like completely detached and hit like the vertical stabilizer or, you know, another part of the plane. But thankfully, you know, the other parts held up and did what they did, and now they land. I gotta say, it's hilarious. Listen, the flight attendant just calmly say, welcome to Austin, and that's what we trained to do. Yeah, that's not the best day. Now, listen, that looks scary, and don't get me wrong, that's not something anybody wants to see. This is one of the few times, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, pilots are gonna be able to know what's going on and the passengers will not, or vice versa, or at least if the passengers know, the pilots already know about it. This is one of the extreme rare cases that there's a good chance that the pilots may not know exactly what's happening. So if you are ever on a flight and you see this, I would highly recommend telling the flight attendant and say, hey, maybe tell the pilots and let them know. You know, this is one of those cases where I might even ask, it's emergency, you know, I might ask the flight attendant to take a picture uh, you know, if you have enough time, maybe you have, if you had three pilots, you'd come out and have one take a look. This is, as I said, very unique to have this situation because the sensor and where this is broken may not be corresponding. But let's go ahead and look at the maintenance manual. And I just gotta say big shout out to Stig Aviation for sending me all these manuals. This is, you gotta go check out his channel. He knows the details, he knows the information, he has everything you need. So he sent me these manuals. And based on this, we can kind of tell maybe what happened here with the aft flap track. And so when you look at this situation, so to me, from what we looked at, it looks like the aft flap track, either the bolt or something near there broke. And as you can see that in figure I. And so when that happened to break off the whole part and the only thing holding section J there, those holding held on very well. And that's what held it on. There could be a variety of reasons of why this happened. It could be like a faulty part. It could just be an older plane when it gets to a certain point. But also, you know, even uh, maintenance pointed out to me that this could have been a bird strike. Like if a bird came and hit this in the right way, that could have snapped it off. So again, nobody's necessarily at fault. And again, I can't stress this enough. Things just happen sometimes. Nothing can be 100%. Perfect. But let's go ahead and dive in and show you how the pilots would handle this. So here's two different charts that we have uh, that pilots would have to deal with. You know what, as I said, what's weird with this one is the sensor might not match what's going on outside. But I, you know, I'm looking at these things called the QRH. It's called the Quick Reference Handbook. And this is basically our book. When something goes wrong, there's supposed to be something in there for your problem. Like no matter what, it's supposed to be there. And when I look here, there's two uh, options that we'd probably have. We would have either a flaps fail 
or a trailing edge flaps asymmetry. So let's look at the one con the condition. I would most likely say this would be trailing edge flap asymmetry. And it says condition, one or more of these occur. An uncommanded roll occurs when the flap change position. So that would make sense, right? You pull the flaps out and this thing, the more you pull the flaps out on this video, the more you're gonna get a roll and try and, you know, the plane's gonna try and roll because there's more drag on that side. So I, I'm guessing they would have ran this, but again, not knowing what information and, you know, like if sensations and things that the aircraft was doing, I'm not 100% sure, but it says, or if the left and right flap indications disagree. I don't know exactly. I think the sensor is on the track, but either way, it may have showed a disagree. So right there, you would go through and look, it would say, caution, do not attempt to move the trailing edge flaps with the alternate flap switch because there's no asymmetry protection. You're basically gonna plan to land this plane with little to no flaps and you can do it. So just to go to show you over on the flaps fail checklist, you know, it, it gives you options. If it's flaps is less than eight degrees or flaps is more eight, greater than eight degrees. It, just to give you a reference, if you were going to land this plane and you happen to, uh, you know, let's say your normal ref, you might land, again, this changes based on your weight and the aircraft and your flaps configuration. But let's just say your ref coming into land is 135 knots and a flaps fail, especially if you don't have have leading edge slats, you, you know, that m number might come up pretty high. You might get up to, uh, you know, 160, 170. So basically you're landing uh, flatter and faster. And, you know, it is something that we train for, thankfully. So this is something that all pilots have ran this checklist and they've uh, practiced for it. I would say that it was one of these two checklists that they ran. And I would also say that was a great job by the crew. And let's remember, nobody was injured. A great job by the crew. I love how the flight attendant was so calm at the end there. Welcome to Austin. You know, that's what we train for is to be calm. And, you know, when situations happen, we handle it and we move on. So according to CNN and some of the news articles I saw, the FAA will be investigating. I wouldn't be surprised if the NTSB got involved as well. It's pretty normal. Flaps are a secondary flight control. But that being said, when something like this happens, you know, they want to know, okay, how did this happen? Because why? They want to get out there and prevent something like this from potentially happening again. I've had a flight control malfunction with the flaps myself back on the CRJ back in the day. I'll save that for another video. Thanks for watching. Hit that like, subscribe button. And until next time, stay safe.